In this video, you're going to learn how to work with similar figures and how to find the missing side length or the missing area or the missing volume. We're going to go through three examples. So let's dive into this video. Let's first talk about just a simple example so you kind of understand what exactly are similar figures. Similar means they're basically the same shape but not necessarily the same size. What I mean by that is like, say if you take your smartphone and you do one of these deals where you're enlarging something or reducing something, you don't distort the shape. It's still the same shape, you recognize it, but it's proportionally larger or smaller. So the corresponding angles would stay the same. So for example, if I had a square, these angles would all still be right angles. So again, it's not distorting it. It's just making the uh, corresponding sides proportionally larger or smaller by a scale factor. And what we can look at here is imagine if we had these two squares and we say, well, what's the, what's the ratio, okay, or the scale factor? Well, you can see that the ratio of the corresponding sides is two to six, which we could write it as a fraction like a one third, okay? You can also write it with a colon like one, one to three like that, or you can even write the word two in between one to three. That's the ratio between the two sides. But let's say we wanted to find the uh, perimeter of this square. Well, the perimeter we know is the distance all the way around. If we add all those sides together, we could say that the uh, perimeter here is equal to eight. The perimeter here is six plus six plus six plus six, which is 24. And notice that the ratio of the perimeters, eight over 24, reduces to one to three, the same as the ratio of the sides. The way I like to think about that is, the perimeter is really just like a string that's tied all the way around this object. And it's really just represents the length or like a one dimensional, uh, a line is like 1D, right? One dimensional. But if we look at the side lengths, that's also one dimensional. It's just like the length. So it makes sense that the ratios would be the same. Now, if we look at the area of this smaller square, two times two or side times side or side squared gives us an area of four square units. Here, if we do side times side, that gives us an area of 36. Now notice the ratio of four divided by 36 is reducing to one ninth. Now you might say, well, wait a second, I thought the scale factor was one third. Well, if you multiply, let's say six times one third, you get two, and six times one third, you get two, and we know area is side times side, so it's, you know, this side's one third less, or one third of this, this side's one third. So one third times one third is one ninth. So when you're comparing the ratio of the areas, you wanna take that scale factor and square it. The way I like to think about it is I think of areas two dimensional, it's length by width, right? Length is just one dimensional. So if I take that scale factor and square it, I'm gonna get the ratio of the areas, okay? And if we wanna take this one step further, let's imagine instead of these being squares, that they're actually cubes. We're dealing with three-dimensional object here. And let's just say that it's uh, two by two by two, six by six by six. Here the volume would be two times two times two is eight. Here the volume is six times six times six, which is 216. Eight divided by 216 reduces to 1 27th. Okay, and you'll notice that's one third, not squared, but cubed. Because if you think about it, the length is one third of six, the uh, width is one third, the height is one third. So you have one third times one third times one third or one third cubed. The way I like to think about it is three dimensional volume, right? It's 3D, it's the scale factor to the third power. Now I just wanna show you a little table here just to kind of help solidify this idea for you. And we're gonna get into the three example problems in just a second, I promise. Uh, but just so you understand this real clearly, the scale factor, remember, that's kind of like a one-dimensional. The perimeter, that's like a one-dimensional. Area, we said, is like two-dimensional. Volume is like three-dimensional. So if they give us the scale factor and they say, oh, it's a one to two, is the ratio between the sides, right? The ratio of the perimeters will also be the same, one to two. The ratio of the areas, we'd have to square this. One squared is one, two squared is four, so it's a one to four ratio. And the volume is gonna be the scale factor uh, cubed. So one cubed is one and two cubed is eight. So we have a one to eight ratio between the volumes. But say they give us the perimeter now, and we say, hmm, how do we find the scale factor? Well, the ratio of the perimeters is the same as the scale factor, the, the comparing the sides. That's also gonna be three to five. If we do the area, we have to square the scale factor because we're going from one dimensional to two dimensional, right? So we're squaring this, so three squared is nine, five squared is 25. And if we're going to, for the volume, that's 
three-dimensional, we're going to cube the scale factor. 3 cubed is 27, 5 cubed is 125. So that's the ratio of the volumes. And we can make a proportion. I'll show you how to do that in these examples. But let's look at this one. Here they're giving us the area, which is comparing the two-dimensional objects. We want to compare just the scale factor, the ratio of the corresponding sides. So to go from the area to the scale factor, we're going from two-dimensional to one-dimensional, we're going to actually have to take the square root. Okay, see the difference, the square root? So square root of 16 is 4, square root of 81 is 9, and the ratio of the perimeters is the same, 4 to 9, because perimeter and the scale factor, they're both one-dimensional. But to go from the scale factor to the ratio of the volumes, we're going to have to cube this. See, we're going from 1D to 3D. 4 cubed is 64, 9 cubed is 729. That's the ratio of the volumes. And lastly, if they give us the ratio of the volumes, three-dimensional, we're going to take the cube root to get the scale factor comparing the one-dimensional uh, components. Cube root of 27 is 3. Cube root of 1,000 is 10, because 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. Once we have the scale factor, we know the ratio of the perimeters. It's the same, 3 to 10. And we can find the areas, the ratio of the areas, by squaring that scale factor. 3 squared is 9. 10 squared is 100. So I hope that makes sense. Let's dive into some examples. You'll see how this works. The symbol for similar is this guy right here. And it basically tells us that these shapes are the same size, but one's proportionally larger or smaller than the other one. If they give us these two areas, but we want to find this missing side length, remember, area is two-dimensional, we're going to have to take the square root to get the ratio of the one-dimensional components, the sides. Square root of 49 is 7. Square root of 4 is 2. And I'm going to make a proportion here. Now, see if you can follow this. Notice 7 is larger than 2. So I'm comparing the larger object here on the left the smaller object on the right. So I say large to small, that ratio is the same as large to small. Here we know that the larger object on the left has a side length of 2. This side length we don't know. Let's just call it x. Proportions, we can cross multiply to solve. So we can say, hmm, this diagonal multiplied together, 7x, is equal to this diagonal multiplied together, 4. Divide both sides by 7. And you can see x is equal to 4 7 so That's how long this side length is. But the key here is to kind of ask yourself, am I given the two-dimensional uh, information or the three-dimensional information or the one-dimensional? And where am I going? Am I going from, in this case, from two-dimensional to one-dimensional, right? I had to take the square root. If I was going from one to two, I'd have to square or raise it to the second power. Let's look at number two now. Here we're given these pyramids, and let's just say that they're similar, okay? Meaning that, you know, they're proportionally larger or smaller. All the corresponding angles are congruent. But we're given the volumes and we want to find this missing side length. Well, volume I know is three-dimensional, right? 3D. How do I go from the volume, the three-dimensional ratio, to the ratio of the side lengths, which is just one-dimensional? Well, to go from three-dimensional to one-dimensional, I have to take the cube root, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as a fraction, 125 over 8, and I'm going to take the cube root of that. What number times itself three times is 125? That's 5. What number times itself three times is eight? That's two. And notice I'm comparing large to small. Five is bigger than two, so large to small. Large to small. See, now I can compare the corresponding sides. Cross multiply. Five X is equal to four times two, which is eight. Divide both sides by five, and you can see X is coming out to eight fifths, and that's the missing side length. But again, remember, we're going from 3D, three-dimensional volume, to one-dimensional. That's why we had to take the cube root to get the ratio of those sides, that scale factor. Let's do one more example. See if you can do this one on your own, and we'll go through it together. Right, see if you can do this third example. We're given these two stars, okay, and they're similar to one another. And we're given this side length is 6, and this side length is 2. This area is 100. How much is the area of this smaller star? So how would you do that one? And while you're doing that problem, I'll do it, uh, we can check it together. Just wanted to let you know about my courses. If you haven't uh, gotten them already, I've got an Algebra 1 and an Algebra 2 video course. I've got links in the description below. Check those out. They're really helpful if you like the way that I explain things. But what I notice here is that we're comparing these one-dimensional components. It's like a ratio of 6 to 2, right? Which can be reduced by dividing these by 2. So it's a ratio of 3 to 1. But notice we're comparing the side lengths, which is one-dimensional. We want to compare the areas, which are two-dimensional. What do we have to do to the scale factor? 
Well, if you said square it, you're absolutely right. So we're going to square this, and that's going to give us a ratio of the areas of 9 to 1, right? So the other thing that students sometimes have a little bit of a challenge with is they don't know what to put in the numerator and the denominator. And you can do this a couple different ways. You can say I'm going from left to right. See, 6 to 2, that's uh, 3 to 1, so left to right. And so I'm comparing the left object to the right object. The area of the left object is 100. The area of the right object, we don't know, we'll call it x. The way I like to do it is I like to look at the ratio here and say 9 to 1. 9 is obviously bigger than 1, so I'm comparing the larger object to the smaller object. I have to put the area of the larger object up here and the smaller down here. So large to small, large to small. Then we can cross multiply, cross the uh, equal sign there, cross product. 9x is equal to 100 times 1, which is 100. Divide both sides by 9, and you can see we're getting x is equal to 100 over 9 is the area of this smaller star. So great job if you're able to follow these examples. If you want more practice, which I highly recommend, it's good to practice these, test yourself. Follow me over to that other video I did talk about, talking about similar figures. See if you can pause the video and try some of those examples and master this concept. I'll see you over in that video.